Hello everyone, it's Seaput Magur again here. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add zoom and pan effects to a video in OpenShot. Here I have this original video. And I'm going to edit it by adding zoom and pan effects and animations. So that it's going to look like this. Alright, let's get started. First, I'm gonna add the original video to the OpenShot project files. And then I'm gonna make sure the project profile's frame rate matches the original video's frame rate, which, in this case, is 24 frame per second. After that, I'm gonna add the video clip to the timeline. And then, as usual, to make positioning the playhead easier, I'm gonna zoom in the timeline by shortening the timeline zoom slider. So let's start by adding zoom in effect in the beginning of the video and animate the transition from the initial or normal scale to the zoomed in scale. The first step of adding a zoom animation is determining the point in the video timeline when the animation should begin. In this example, I'm going to make the zoom in animation begin after the clip plays for one second. So, I'm going to put the playhead at one second mark of the timeline ruler. After that, we're going to make the frame at the current playhead position the start keyframe of the zoom in animation. To do that, go to the clip properties panel and then look for the scale X, scale Y, location X, and location Y properties. Right click on each properties value and then on the pop up menu, click insert keyframe. The reason why we also insert the start keyframe into the location properties is because we want to be able to zoom in to any point or location on the video viewing area instead of just zooming into the center of the viewing area. So now, the frame at the playhead position becomes the start keyframe of the zoom in animation, as indicated by the green mark on the video clip's timeline. Next, we need to determine the zoom in animation duration, which together with the zoom factor, will determine how fast the zoom in animation will be. For this example, I'm gonna set the zoom in factor to 2, and make the zoom in animation's duration 2 seconds. So first I'll move the playhead to the 3 second mark of the timeline ruler. And then we go to the clip properties, double click the scale X value, and type in 2. And then press enter on the keyboard. As we can see here on the preview, the video frame at the playhead position is scaled up by 2 times in the horizontal direction. In addition, it is automatically set as the end keyframe of the zoom in animation, as indicated by the green mark on the clip's timeline. And this keyframe has been automatically inserted into scale X property as indicated by the green highlight on the scale X property. To maintain the video's aspect ratio, we will also need to change the scale Y value to 2. So double-click the scale Y value on the clip properties panel, and then type in 2, and then press enter on the keyboard. And now if we play the clip from the beginning, we will see that the zoom in animation will start at the 1 second mark for the duration of 2 seconds, with a zoom factor of 2. But as you might notice, the video is zoomed in gradually at a constant rate, which looks quite dull. It would be better if we can zoom in fast in the beginning, and then slow towards the end of the animation. To do that, we can change the interpolation mode of the zoom in animation at the animation's end keyframe. So, move the playhead to the zoom in animation's end keyframe, by clicking the previous key point button. And then, on the clip properties panel, right click the scale X value. On the pop-up menu, select Bezier, and then click Ease Out. The interpolation mode icon on the scale X value will now change to a curve icon. And then we repeat these steps for the scale Y value. Now if we play the video clip from the beginning, we will see that the video is zoomed in fast in the beginning of the zoom in animation, and then slowly toward the end. The next step is changing the zoom in point from the center of the viewing area, to a point somewhere around the leftmost skyscraper. To do that, first move the playhead to the zoom in animation's end keyframe by clicking the previous key point button. And then, click and drag the video preview, like this. As we can see here, the values of location X and location Y on the clip properties changed as we dragged the previewed frame. In addition, the current frame, which is the zoom in animation's end keyframe, is also automatically inserted as a keyframe of the location X and Y properties, as indicated by the green highlights on both properties. Then, right click the location X value, select Bezier, 
and then click Ease Out to change the interpolation mode to Ease Out. Repeat these steps for Location Y property. And now if we play the video, we will see that the video is zoomed in to a point on the left of the viewing area. Next, we're gonna add panning effect to the video right after the zoom in animation finishes. For that purpose, we will need to add two more keyframes as the start and end keyframes of the panning animation. So first, move the playhead to a point on the clip timeline where the panning effect should begin. In this example, I'm gonna make the panning animation begin at the 3.5 second mark of the clip timeline so that there will be a slight delay between the zoom in and the panning animations. After that, go to the clip properties panel, right click the location x value, and then insert the current frame as the start keyframe of the panning effect. Then, move the playhead to a point where the panning effect should finish. Here, I'm gonna put it at the 10 second mark of the clip timeline so that we have 6.5 seconds of panning animation. And then, go back to the clip properties panel, double click the location x value, and type in minus 0.5. And then press enter on the keyboard. This will make the current frame the end keyframe of the panning effect and is automatically inserted into the location x property. For a zoom factor of 2 times, the location x value of minus 0.5 will cause the panning effect to continue all the way until the right edge of the frame. You may try different numbers and perhaps with different zoom factor to see how this property value affects the panning effect result. And for the panning interpolation mode, we're going to leave it with linear interpolation. And now if we play the video from the beginning, we will see the panning effect will begin a short moment after the zoom in. And lastly, we're gonna add a quick short zoom out effect beginning at 0.5 second after the panning finishes. So, I'm gonna put the playhead at the 10.5 second mark of the timeline. Then I'll go to the Clip Properties panel and insert the current frame as the start keyframe of the zoom out animation to the Scale X, Scale Y, Location X, and Location Y properties. After that, I'll move the playhead to the 11 second mark of the clip and set this point as the end of the zoom out effect. To do that, double click the Scale X and Y values on the Clip Properties panel and set them to 1. Likewise, double click the location X and Y values and set them to zero. And now if we play the video from the beginning, we will have the final result like the one I showed you in the beginning of this tutorial. Alright, so that's how we can add zoom and pan effects to a video at any arbitrary point. I hope you find this tutorial useful, and please subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this in the future.